Hello everyone. Welcome to the new video. Today we will discuss in brief about seriousness assessment of adverse event reports. In short, we will discuss how do we assess the seriousness of the report when we receive any source document in pharmacovigilance for processing. So let's start. Accurate and exact seriousness assessment is a very critical step in case processing because it impacts the regulatory reporting timelines of individual case safety reports and drug safety. You might think, how incorrect seriousness assessment impact regulatory reporting? Answer to this is, regulatory reporting timeline for serious and non-serious cases are different. I have already explained the regulatory reporting timeline in my previous video. You can get the link of that video in i button above and in description. So if you incorrectly assess any serious report as non-serious, it may affect the regulatory reporting timelines. Next question may come in mind. How does incorrect seriousness assessment impact drug safety? Answer to this is, this can lead to trigger false or incorrect signal due to which drug safety can be compromised. To understand how to assess the seriousness of report. First we will discuss the definition of serious adverse event. Serious adverse event is, any untoward medical occurrence that at any dose results in death of the patient or result in life-threatening condition or requires hospitalization or prolonged existing hospitalization or which may results in persistent or significant disability or which causes congenital anomaly in newborn babies or which fall under important medical event. Now we will discuss each seriousness criteria in detail. First seriousness criteria is death or fatal. There are few criteria based on which you can consider seriousness of any event as death. First criteria is only if seriousness of event is reported by reporter as death or fatal in the report. Second criteria is if reporter clearly mentioned in the report that the patient died after receiving a drug. Third criteria is if reported event is completed suicide, then it should be categorized under seriousness death. Please note, if reported event is only suicide, without any outcome. In such cases, do not consider, or assume, seriousness criteria of event as death, as we don't know the outcome of suicide. Then question may arise, what we should do in such scenario? Answer to this is, we need to immediately raise query to the reporter asking the outcome of the suicide. If reporter confirms that, it is a completed suicide, then only consider the seriousness of event as, death. Now let's move to the second seriousness criteria which is, life-threatening. So first criteria to consider seriousness of any event, as life-threatening, is If reporter clearly mentioned in report that, the patient is in life-threatening condition at the time of event. Second criteria is, if the patient was at risk of death at the time of event. Seriousness criteria life-threatening, does not qualify for the events, which hypothetically might have caused death of the patient, if more severe. What does this sentence means? Let me take one scenario to understand this. If patient experienced heart attack and taken to the hospital. Now the question is, what is the seriousness criteria of heart attack? Let me give you some options. Seriousness of heart attack can be hospitalization or life-threatening. Correct seriousness for the event is hospitalization and not life-threatening. How? It's based on severity. If heart attack hypothetically become more severe, then it might cause death of the patient. And, at present, patient is not at immediate risk of death. Another example is, if patient require ventilator support, or patient is in coma, then the event should be considered as life-threatening. Considering, the patient was at immediate risk of death at the time of report. Now let's move to the third seriousness criteria which is hospitalization. There are two criterias when any event can qualify for seriousness criteria as hospitalization. First is if patient admitted to hospital for minimum 24 hours. And second is any event caused prolongation of existing hospitalization. If these two conditions were fulfilled by any event, that event can be considered as serious based on hospitalization. Now let's discuss few conditions, which cannot be considered as hospitalization. Seriousness of event can't be hospitalization, 
if patient is admitted to the hospital for less than 24 hours. If hospitalization requirement is reported in the study protocol, then also seriousness can't be hospitalization in absence of event. Seriousness of event can't be hospitalization if patient admitted to undergo pre-planned surgery, which does not have any relation to the drug. Seriousness can't be hospitalization in case of emergency visit to the hospital, where patient is treated and immediately released from the hospital. Now let's move to the fourth seriousness criteria, which is disability. Disability should be considered as seriousness criteria, if seriousness of the event clearly reported by reporter as disability. Or, if patient lost any of the body part due to the event. If the patient permanently loses the senses due to the event. For example, patient lost the ability to hear due to the event. Or, patient lost his or her eyes due to the event. This all should be considered as a disability. Apart from this, loss or substantial limitation to any of the body function for more than 7 days also fall under disability criteria. This can includes difficulty in breathing, difficulty in drinking, or difficulty in eating. Disability also include impairment of daily day-to-day -day work for more than 7 days. This can includes unable to dress or undress, unable to sit, or unable to walk. Now let's move to the fifth seriousness criteria, which is congenital anomaly. Congenital anomalies, also commonly called as birth defects, congenital disorders, or congenital abnormalities. Birth defect is a condition present at the time of birth, which can potentially impact health, development, and survival of newly born baby or infants. This seriousness criteria can be used only in pregnancy reports. Pregnancy reports are one, where any of the parent exposed to medication, and conceive baby after that. Or if pregnant mother, took a drug and baby had birth defect because of the consumption of a drug during pregnancy. In such scenario we have to create separate baby case. Now let's move to the last seriousness criteria, which is an important medical event. It's also called as medically significant. First criteria is, based on the medical judgment of doctor or physician. Any event can be considered as serious, based on important medical event criteria. Another criteria is, if the reported event present in the important medical event terms list, which is prepared and maintained by the European Medicines Agency. This list also called as IMA list. Another criteria is, if the reported event which meets criteria of, grade 3 and above, in common terminology criteria for adverse events list. Such events must be considered as serious, based on important medical event criteria. In clinical trial reports, if any lab data reported with abnormal results, and common terminology criteria for adverse events should be reported as grade 3 or above, such abnormal lab data should be coded as an event into the case, and seriousness criteria for the event should be considered as important medical event or medically significant. Hope till now you have understand how to assess the seriousness criteria of any report. Now let's discuss when to assess seriousness criteria of any report. First condition is, if seriousness of the event is not reported by the reporter, then we need to assess the seriousness of the report based on parameters we have discussed just now. Second condition is, if seriousness of the report is reported as non-serious by the reporter, then we need to reassess the event seriousness to make sure report is non-serious. And third condition is, if reported seriousness is hospitalization. Then we need to reassess the seriousness of report to make sure if patient is hospitalized for more than 24 hours or not. I hope you have understood how and when to assess the seriousness of any adverse event reports from this video. If you have any doubts or suggestion, please feel free to comment below. That's it for today. If you like the video, please share with the friends, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.